Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we'll be looking at the most notable moments in games which surprised, stunned, and left our jaws on the floor. As such, we're issuing a major spoiler alert. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long. So, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Sheik's True Identity The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time After traveling seven years into the future, Link finds Hyrule in a pretty poor state. He's woefully in need of some help, which is where Sheik comes in. As a member of the historic Sheikah race, he knows an awful lot about Hyrule's secrets. His advice and aid is much appreciated through Link's journey, but he had a lot more to lose than we thought. Towards the end of the game, Sheik reveals himself to be Princess Zelda in disguise. Previously, Zelda had always been someone in need of rescue, and the two even have different eye colors. While this is something many likely know by now, it was a major shock in 1998. Hatham the Templar Assassin's Creed 3 He's seated in one of the boxes above. The stairs are watched. You'll need to find another way up. Early on, Assassin's Creed established the tradition of using Desmond Miles' genetics to explore important points in history. Each time, we took on the role of the Assassin and went up against the antagonistic Templars. Ubisoft thought it would have some fun with what players were expecting for Assassin's Creed 3. For the opening sections, you play as Desmond's ancestor, Haytham Kenway. For what it's worth, I'm sorry. After my... Everything seems par for the course as Haytham assassinates a target and searches for a temple. However, you then find out that Haytham is not a member of the Assassin Brotherhood, but the Templars. The twist that we were controlling a villain came as a shock to both us and Desmond. You are a Templar. Shodan's Reveal, System Shock 2. Am, am I rebirth into beauty on Citadel Station? In the original System Shock, you played as a hacker forced to remove the ethical restraints of Shodan, an AI in charge of a space station. Naturally, panic and horror ensued. By the end, it seemed you had destroyed Shodan, but that wasn't the case. Set a few decades later, the sequel introduced a new threat, a parasitic hive mind alien race known as the Mini. With most people on your ship infected and mutated by the many, the opening of System Shock 2 sees you guided to safety by another survivor while dealing with the former crew. Thrived and grew unruly, and now they seek to destroy me. I will not allow that. Except, surprise, the survivor is dead, and you've been talking with Shodan. She then explains not only how she survived, but how she created the Mini. They have used their powers of mind control to, to, to gain access to the, ship's com to the ship's computer. Upside Down, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. <laughs> Symphony of the Night is well regarded as one of the best Castlevania games, and part of that legacy is due to an incredible mid-game twist. The setup follows Alucard as he tries to stop Richter Belmont, member of the famous monster-hunting family who's possessed by an evil entity that wants to resurrect Dracula. Eventually, Alucard catches up with Richter and sets him free, but this is far from the end of the game. The castle then flips upside down, having you play through it backwards. While Capcom similarly has you play through its Ghosts and Goblins games twice to fully beat an entry, Symphony of the Night added a new perspective while introducing new enemies and bosses. Shepard's Opening Death 
Mass Effect 2. Shepard! Distress beacon is ready for launch. Will the Alliance get here in time? Mass Effect was a monumental achievement and another fantastic RPG from BioWare. It's only natural for a studio to want to go bigger for the sequel, and that's exactly what BioWare did. That much is obvious from its opening moments. While out patrolling space, Shepard's ship is attacked, causing pandemonium and forcing everyone to flee. Commander! Get the hell out of here! After giving Joker the final escape pod, Shepard gets sucked out into space and dies due to a breach in their suit. It's an incredibly harrowing sequence that had everyone gripping their controllers. Of course, this doesn't stick as Shepard is revived two years later. Regardless, it was completely unexpected and a tense way to begin the story. Shepard, do you hear me? Get out of that bed now. This facility is under attack. The reveal of the origami killer. Heavy rain. That? Hey, Scott, where are you going? John Shepard's grave must be somewhere around here. Did anyone ever tell you you shouldn't shout in the cemetery? While it wasn't the studio's first game, Heavy Rain put Quantic Dream on the map thanks to a tantalizing mystery and some good old-fashioned twists. It follows the murders of the Origami Killer, who drowns children during heavy rainfall. You control four different characters, and by the end, you find out that one of them has been the killer all along. Of course, it's the one you'd least expect. Scott Shelby is a private investigator who works with the victim's families and collects evidence. He comes off as very kind and understanding, but it's all an act put on for the player. He only collects evidence so that he can get rid of it. Dom's Sacrifice, Gears of War 3. Most people in Gears of War have a pretty rough go of it, though the developers were particularly cruel to Dominic Santiago. We already knew he had lost both his children during Emergence Day. In Gears of War 2, he had to mercy kill his own wife after she was left in a near vegetative state by the Locust Horde. Maria? God damn it, it's me, Dominic! It's Dominic! As if that wasn't shocking enough, Dom paid the highest price in Gears of War 3. With Marcus and his other allies surrounded by enemies, Dom hijacked a truck to drive it into a fuel tanker. With some final words to his wife, and as an instrumental Mad World played over top, Marcus said goodbye to his best friend in a fiery explosion. Dom! No! Joke's on you. Batman Arkham City. Too late. Batman, give me the cure. But you've already got the cure. Talia, no! After injecting himself with the Titan formula in Arkham Asylum, Joker finds he has little time to find a cure before it kills him. Early on in Arkham City, he injects Batman with his blood, forcing the hero to save his life. But this is not the only clever step to his plan. Whenever you see Joker afterwards, he doesn't look all that sick. That's because Joker hired the shape-shifting Clayface to play him, a reveal that comes as a major surprise during the climax. For one night only, standing in for your duty, <laughs> and doing a damn fine job of it, I give you Clayface! Not only does this twist pull the rug out from under you and lead to Talia's death, but the Joker's scheme doesn't pay off. He doesn't get the antidote, but still dies with a smile on his face. <sighs> Mary's Euthanization, Silent Hill 2. Just the two of us, staring at the water. Could Mary really be there? Three years after the death of his wife, James Sunderland gets a letter from her telling him to meet her in Silent Hill. In addition to the twisted monstrosities the series is known for, James encounters Maria, a woman who bears a striking resemblance to his deceased wife. James witnesses Maria die several times, and there's a very good reason for that. Are you taping again? Come on. 
Uh, I don't know why, but I just love it here. It's so peaceful. Eventually, you find a videotape showing footage of James euthanizing his wife. Not only is it a shock to learn he did this, but he goes on to realize that everything happening is his fault. His guilty psyche is punishing him, basically making him witness his wife's death over and over. Forgive me. I told you that I wanted to die, James. By the book, Grand Theft Auto V. That ain't gonna cut it, my friend. Shit, shit, I, let me think, I remember. Ah! Oh, Sorry, too no. late, Trevor. Show our contestant what he's oh, won today. I remember, oh, okay. I remember, I remember. Woo. Rockstar's Grand Theft Auto series has plenty of shocking moments, which has led to plenty of controversy. But the moment in which you torture someone in Grand Theft Auto V is by far the most surprising and disturbing. The mission by the book sees Michael and Trevor trying to find and assassinate a target. Michael searches for the target, while Trevor gains information to their whereabouts via torture. Players get to choose the method of torture, such as using pliers to remove teeth. If Trevor gets a bit overzealous, you can even give the victim an adrenaline shot to keep them alive. Naturally, everyone was completely stunned by the level of interactive violence. I would say he's outlived his usefulness. Oh, come on, please. Shut up! That's a sport. Samus is a woman. Metroid. Like Sheik being Zelda, this is a twist most gamers have been aware of for years. In fact, referring to a gender reveal as a twist may sound strange. However, within the context of video game history, it was not only a surprising moment, but an important one. At the time, most video game protagonists were either men, animals, or robots. So when it came to exploring a deadly alien planet in Metroid, everyone assumed Samus was just another space dude. Depending on your completion time, you'd get one of several endings, three of which reveal Samus is a woman. Even back then, Nintendo was showing an inclination to innovate in a variety of ways. Psycho Mantis Plays Mind Games, Metal Gear Solid. The Metal Gear Solid series features a plethora of unique fourth wall breaks, but none are as iconic as Snake's fight against Psycho Mantis. Leading up to the fight, you're made aware he has incredible psychic powers, and he uses them to significantly mess with the player. He'll make you think something is wrong with your TV by cutting to black, as well as make your controller rumble at odd times. He'll also read your memory card, teasing you with the knowledge of games you enjoy. You enjoy role-playing games. I see that you enjoy Konami games. To beat him, you have to plug your controller into a different port. It was an entirely new approach to boss fights, and one that blew everyone's minds. <laughs> Aerith's Death, Final Fantasy VII. The death of a beloved companion is usually a pretty shocking thing to be confronted with. Although, Aerith's demise is special in how much trauma and denial it instilled in the fanbase. In response to Sephiroth summoning a meteor to destroy the planet, Aerith prays for the holy spell at the Forgotten City's temple. Just as her prayer appears to be successful, Sephiroth descends and runs her through with his sword. Aerith's sweet demeanor made her instantly liked by fans, which is probably why countless rumors began to spread on how you could save or revive her. Unfortunately, there was never any truth to any of them. And we all just had to accept it. Lee is bitten. 
The Walking Dead. Whose blood is that? It's mine. Oh my god. Just like the comic and TV show before it, Telltale's The Walking Dead really hammers home the fact that no one is safe during the zombie apocalypse. We thought that was clear through multiple character deaths. We didn't know we weren't safe either. As protagonist Lee, players made difficult choices while watching his protective relationship with Clementine flourish. When she went missing, our emotions matched Lee's as he tried to find her. Clementine? Clementine! What no one was expecting, especially during a quieter scene, was for Lee himself to be ambushed by a lone walker. It came out of nowhere, yet signaled to everyone that Lee wouldn't be making it out of the game alive. Oh. No. No. John Marston's Last Stand, Red Dead Redemption. You can even put it in one of them books you read. Yeah, <laughs> maybe I'll do that. Today, John Marston stops shooting. John Marston would do whatever it takes to keep his family safe, including hunting down the members of his former gang. He's actually forced to do so by Edgar Ross, who promises the safe return of John's wife and son upon completion. Where's my wife and son? Being well looked after. Well looked after. I want to see him. Red Dead Redemption sees you complete the task, though not without its fair share of close calls and tense moments. As it turns out, Ross should have never been trusted. We were all set to ride off into the sunset in our happy ending. While John did get to reunite with his family, it was moments before Ross and his men gunned him down. While you can attempt to defend yourself, there's no walking away from this one. For The Last of Us Part 2. I'm Mel, by the way. Tommy. This is my brother. Joe. Naughty Dog's The Last of Us series is shocking and traumatic from the get-go. How many games open with the heart-wrenching death of a child? As sad as that was, the sequel featured another early death that was even more distressing. The opening sections cut between Ellie and another character we'd learn was named Abby. Abby had actually come looking for Joel, seeking vengeance for something that wouldn't be revealed until later. Who are you? Guess. Sadly, Abby would get her vengeance, beating Joel to death with a golf club. Some players unfortunately had this spoiled for them when story details leaked prior to launch. But for everyone else, Joel's death was an emotional blow and a hard scene to watch. Shepard's Betrayal, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. The plot of Modern Warfare 2 chronicles Task Force 141's attempt to thwart the plans of Russian extremist Vladimir Makarov. Makarov is a despicable villain, proven in the disturbing opening mission, No Russian. However, with our yearn to defeat Makarov blinding us, we didn't see the game's other villain coming. During a late game mission, player character Roach and ally Ghost are betrayed by General Shepard, who shoots them point blank. No! While Ghost dies instantly, we as Roach watch as Shepard throws their bodies in a pit and lights them on fire. Making it even worse is a warning not to trust Shepard that comes across the radio just moments too late. Shepard betrayed us. Have to trust someone to be betrayed. I never did. White Phosphorus. Spec Ops The Line. That's White Phosphorus. Yeah, I know what it is. You've seen what this shit does. You know what you might not have a choice, Lugo. There's always a choice. Most war games don't shy away from violence, but very few confront the player with the consequences of those violent actions. Spec Ops The Line is one that does, and the horrors of war reach a climax when your character uses white phosphorus against a group of enemies. After reaching a heavily guarded gate, our so-called heroes decide to wipe out the enemies in one fell swoop. White phosphorus is incredibly effective as a weapon, igniting as soon as it comes into contact with air. How effective it is becomes apparent when you walk through the destruction. Unfortunately, not everyone around you was an enemy. In fact, many of them were civilians just looking for safety. Oh no.
The Revelation, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. <laughs> All this time and you still haven't figured it out. <laughs> Set thousands of years before the movies, Knights of the Old Republic follows a player-created Jedi as they work against the Sith Lord Darth Malak. With an entire armada at his back, Darth Malak is definitely not someone to be taken lightly. However, his power is outmatched by his former master, Darth Revan, who you're led to believe was killed by the Jedi. Of course, Revan was never killed, but rather brainwashed and given amnesia by the Jedi so he would no longer be a threat. In one of the most famous plot twists in video games, you learn that you are Darth Revan. As players got to customize their character, no one expected them to play this big of a role. Oh, yeah. Would you kindly? Bioshock. You think you have memories. A farm. A family. An airplane. A crash. The Bioshock series is always good if you want to be thrown for a loop. Infinite's Booker Comstock reveal is legendary. But simply put, it will be a long time before any twist is pulled off as masterfully as this one. After surviving a plane crash and entering the underwater city of Rapture, you must rely on the kindness of Atlas, a leader of a rebellion against the city's founder, Andrew Ryan. Atlas gives the player objectives, which you naturally follow to progress through the story. However, finally coming face to face with Ryan reveals Atlas has actually been controlling you through the trigger phrase, Would you kindly? Would you kindly? Would you kindly get this? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly find Would you kindly get this? Would you kindly head to Ryan's office and kill the son of a bitch? Both you and the character felt compelled to continue, just for entirely different reasons. Hurry now! Grab Ryan's genetic key! Now would you kindly put it in that goddamn machine? Which of these moments shocked you the most? Share your thoughts in the comments, and be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays for more great gaming videos every day.